So in standard 21 in our video notes we learned about how to uh, do arithmetic with vectors, we learned about how to write the x and y components of vectors based on information about the magnitude and the angle. Uh, so here we're going to apply all those ideas to some story problems and, and see how that works out. So let's start with this first example. It says that an airplane is pointed due south, flying at 320 miles per hour relative to the air. Um, and another way of kind of understanding this idea of relative to the air is to say that uh, the plane would be flying 320 miles per hour if the air was completely still. That's one way to put that. But then if you have any kind of wind, like we do in this problem, then, then obviously that changes. So it says if a wind is blowing at 20 miles per hour in the direction of 40 degrees west of north, find the true speed and direction of the plane. So what we want to do is express the different pieces of information, excuse me, the, of information they've given us and the information that we want to find out in terms of vectors. So let's start with what they told us about what the airplane's trying to do. It's trying to fly due south, right? So I can draw that, right? Flying directly due south is going to be a vector that just goes straight down the page. Um, and just to give this a, a, a name, let's call this V. Okay. Now, we know that there's not still air, right? We know that there's a wind blowing, and it says that the wind is blowing in the direction 40 degrees west of north. So a way that I like to look at this is to say that I'm going to express my wind vector as being having the beginning of it attached to the end of the plane because then that will allow me to think of this in terms of vector addition. So it says 40 degrees west of due north. So starting here, pointing due north, I want to go 40 degrees west of that and then head off in that direction. And I don't want this to be very big compared to this because I know that this vector's magnitude is equal to 320 miles per hour, right? Because this vector should be representing the speed of the plane. And my wind vector's magnitude is 20 miles per hour for a magnitude. And so really, if I was to really be nitpicky about it, this is even too long here, right? I should probably even shorten it up a bit, right? Because if I want this to be 320, this should be significantly shorter than that 320. It's going to go right up just like that. Right, so I know that that's 40 degrees there. So if this is what the plane's trying to do, but then this is what the wind's doing to it, the idea here, and I'll call this W for wind, the idea is that the resultant vector, or the vector that represents the true speed and direction of the plane, is given by the sum of those two. So it would be this vector that goes from the beginning of where the plane started flying to the, uh, the end of the wind vector. So that vector there is going to be V plus W. That's what we're trying to find. All right, so in order to be able to find V plus W, we need to know how to express both V and W. W. So V, because it's heading directly south, it doesn't have any, any left to right movement. So that means its X component is zero. But then it's flying 320 miles per hour and it's all going in the south direction. So not only am I going to put 320 here, but I'm going to put negative 320. Because when we're thinking of east, west, north, and south, we want to preserve uh, that idea that down is negative, up is positive. That'll help us to arrive at the correct solution. All right, so now let's talk W. Okay, what's its X component? Well, remember that you can find the X component of a vector by taking the magnitude of the vector times the cosine of the angle for that vector. So we know that the magnitude for this wind is 20 miles per hour. So I'm going to multiply by that by the cosine of, and what I'm going to do is make sure that I always 
whenever I'm putting an angle in here, I'm always going to do the true angle from the positive x-axis, right? That's the traditional place that we always measure from. So I'm going to measure from here all the way to here. And so, of course, I know that that's going to be the 90 degrees from here to here plus the 40 degrees that they gave me. So I'm going to stick 130 degrees in here. And the reason that I use the true angle is because then whether an x or y component should be positive or negative is going to come out naturally when you take the cosine of that angle. So the cosine of 130 is a negative number, so I get a negative x component, which of course I can see I do, right? Because I'm heading to the left um, with my wind vector. And so then, of course, my y component would be 20 times the sine of 130 degrees. So there's my two vectors. And so in order to answer this question, I need to add them together. So v plus w, I'm just going to add my x components, of course. So that's of course, 0 plus 20 cosine 130 degrees. But in the y, it's going to be negative 320 plus 20 times the sine of 130 degrees. Now this is the true vector for the plane, right? When we're accounting for what the pilot's trying to do and the wind. But they asked for the true speed and the true, and the true direction. So what we want to know then is what is the magnitude of v plus w? That's going to be the speed. But we know how to calculate magnitude, right? It's going to be a little ugly with the terms that we have here, but we're just taking the square root of the x component squared plus the y component squared. And when we put all that in the calculator, it should come out as 305 miles per hour, approximately. All right, now, this 305 miles per hour, um, let's make sure that this makes some sense. The pilot was going, trying to go 320 miles per hour, but that wind is fighting that plane a little bit. So it makes sense that the true speed is going to be a little bit less than what the pilot was trying to do. All right, so now let's talk about the angle. Okay, so what we know is that the tangent of theta is going to be the y component over the x component. So it'll be negative 320 plus 20 sine of 130 degrees, all divided by 20 cosine of 130 degrees. Right? So this is always the y component over the x component. So of course what we want to do then is take the inverse tangent of all that. Oops, tangent, inverse. of all that stuff, oops. So negative 320 plus 20 times the sine, 130 degrees, all divided by 20 cosine of 130 degrees. So when you do that, it spits this out, 87.6 degrees. Now remember that tangent inverse is only going to spit things out to us between negative 90 and 90 degrees, right? So I, I know it's going to be on this right half, okay? But also this, this angle up here is clearly not in the right half. So let's understand what we've been given. Use a different color here. This 87.6 degrees that we're talking about is this, right? That's our 87.6 degrees that we're referring to. 
And clearly, our, our angle that we want, or I guess our vector, is pointed in this direction, right? Oops. Let's do that. Okay, it's pointed down 180 degrees in the other direction. So we are, we are really down here, okay? Now what I want to be able to do though is express this direction as some sort of a heading. So I think what I'm mostly interested in here is this little sliver of an angle right here. Oops. This little sliver of an angle right in here. I want to know what that is. Because whatever that angle is, I could say that it's that much west of due south, okay? So in other words, I'll say it's blank west of south. But of course what we can see is that little sliver of an angle there, that's the same as this little sliver of an angle up here, okay? And we know that that is just 90 minus 87.6 degrees, which is 2.4. So that means that ours is also 2.4 degrees west of south. So when you're finding the true direction of a vector, just be careful and understand that um, the inverse tangent isn't going to automatically spit out what you want, but it'll always give you enough information to figure out which angle it is that you want. Um, and just as a, a quick aside here, if you chose to express your heading differently, that would be okay. So just as an example, do this in a different color so that it would be, don't throw things off too much. You could also state that this here is 87.6 degrees. So if you wanted to, I would be okay with you saying 87.6 degrees, but what have you done? You've started due west and then you've gone south from there. So then you would say south of west. So if this was a test of some sort, and I would accept either one of those answers, just understand that it's possible like on WAMAP or something like that, they may specify exactly how they want it said. So they might, it might say west of south next to the answer blank. And of course, in that case, uh, make sure you follow those directions. All right, so let's look at another example here. Uh, this one says that two tugboats are towing a large ship due east into port. The larger tug exerts a, for, a force of 4,000 pounds on its cable, and the smaller tug exerts a force of 3,200 pounds on its cable. The smaller tug is pointed in the direction 60 degrees east of south. In what direction must the larger boat be pointed so that the ship will be heading exactly due east to port? Okay, so in this case here, our vectors are going to represent the force that is being used to pull and also the direction of the pull of these two different tugboats. All right, now, what do we know? We, we know that we want to be heading exactly due east in the port, right? We know that that's what we want. So I can, I can go ahead and draw that. So I'll just draw a vector heading due east. So that's the vector that, that we want. But how is that coming about? Well, it's telling us that we've got this 3,200 pound force that's pulling in this direction, 60 degrees east of south. So from here, I'm going to start by going due south and then go 60 degrees east of that. So there's this. So this has a magnitude of 3200 and I know this is 60 degrees. And then what I have is I have another uh, I have another one that's got 4,000 pounds of force and it's pulling in some other direction. Okay. Now there's a couple of ways that we can kind of look at this. One is I know that the, the sum of the two forces needs to add together to make this force that's heading due east. 
So when I think of sum in that sense, then I say I'm going to take this vector and attach my other vector to the beginning of my other vector to the end of the other, and that's what it's got to be. Okay, And that's, that's absolutely true, but also at the same time, it doesn't necessarily match up with the picture that we are, are probably imagining in our minds, because we literally would have this other vector up here, so if our, if our ship if our ship's right back here that we're tugging, then what we're going to have is really two different tugboats pulling in different directions. So what I want to do is I want to transfer this red vector up here. I want it to be the same length, same direction, all that. Okay, so we'll go ahead and draw it in like this. I drew it a little longer than this one because it is pulling with more force, right? 4,000 pounds. Of force. Okay. All right. So uh, let's give these vectors some some names. So I'll call this one U, and I'll call this one V. And so then the idea here is that the resultant vector is this U plus V. Okay. Well, understand that what's going on here is a little bit different than our last question. In our last question, what we were given were two vectors, v and w, and we knew everything about those vectors. And then they asked us to tell us about the resultant vector, right? What's its speed? What's its direction? In this instance, we are told about really everything you'd want to know about you, we're told. And we're told the exact direction of the resultant vector, but they've left out a key piece of information about the red vector here, right? They've left out what this angle is. And that's what they're asking us for, right? Because it says, in what direction must the larger boat be pointed? So that's that theta that we're talking about. Okay? So, just like the last problem, though, we're going to go ahead and see if we can express u and v in component form. So the magnitude of u, 3200, times the cosine of, and remember what we said, we want to use the true angle. Okay, So the true angle could be me wrapping all the way around, which would be 330 degrees, or you could also say I'm going to go in this direction, which would mean negative 30 degrees, right? Because we're going clockwise. So I'm going to stick negative 30 in here, but we'll just make a little note here that says, you know, 330 degrees is okay too. The point is we want the true, uh, the true uh, angle. All right, and then we have 3200 times the sine of negative 30 degrees. Okay, how about V? Well, we don't know everything about V, but that doesn't stop us from being able to write this down, right? So we could say then V is 4,000 times the cosine of this unknown angle theta, and then 4,000 times the sine of this unknown angle theta. So, of course, the goal here is going to be to figure out what theta actually is. All right, but in order to do that, uh, we need to combine these. So let's understand what, that, what u plus v is. u plus v is going to equal 3200 times the cosine of negative 30 degrees plus 4000 times the cosine of theta and then 3200 times the sine of negative 30 degrees plus 4000 times the sine of theta. Okay, so that's u plus v. Now what do we know about u plus v? Well, unfortunately we don't actually know um, at this point the magnitude of u plus v. I don't know that. But what I do know is that u plus v is heading directly east. So what that means is that if it's heading directly east, 
then it has no movement in the y direction. Okay. So what we can say is that the y component is equal to zero. So that means that we can, in order to find theta, we can set the y component equal to zero. And that gives us one equation with one unknown. So 4,000 times the sine of theta equals negative 3,200 sine of negative 30 degrees. So the sine of theta is equal to negative 3,200 sine of negative 30 degrees, all divided by 4,000. So then we would say theta is equal to the sine inverse of all that. Now, just like the tan inverse on our last page, we'll remind ourselves that sine inverse only spits out values between negative 90 and 90. But that's good, though, because this theta here that they're giving us is... Um, between negative 90 and 90 for sure. So this in this case we can use this if we want. So one way I could say this is that We're going 23.6 degrees and what are we doing? We're, if we start by heading east and then go north of there, so we would say uh, north of east That would be fine or if I wanted to go east of north how far do I go starting north and going east? Well, that angle is just going to be 90 degrees minus 23.6 degrees, which would be 66.4 degrees east of north. And again, I'd be okay with either one of those as answers. All right, so a little different flavor on that one. That one we didn't know something about one of the components, but we were able to talk about what I knew about the resultant vector, right? That its y component had to be zero in order to set up an equation that allowed me to solve for theta. So let's do one last example. Um, and now that we've done examples one and two, I'd really encourage you to try this one on your own. See what kind of progress you can make on this one. Um, so maybe pause the video um, before you take a look at my solution. All right, so we have a jet flying through the wind that is blowing at the speed of 55 miles per hour in the direction 30 degrees east of north. The jet has a speed of 765 miles per hour relative to the air. In what direction should the pilot head the plane for the true course to be due north? Okay, so here's the thing. We know that a due north course is, is what is desired, right? This is what we want. This is what the pilot wants, okay? But we also know that we have a wind that is blowing with a speed of 55, 55 miles uh, per hour, 30 degrees east of north. So, Here's how I'll draw this one. In the last, in the problem on the previous page, we were kind of starting with the idea of what the pilot's trying to do, and then we had the wind kind of adjusting what really happened. Here we're kind of starting off with the idea of, hey, we've got this wind, what do I do? So let's start by drawing the wind. So 30 degrees east of north, draw something like that. Okay, so you, you're starting with this wind. Now to get to this spot, of course, the pilot needs to head, not exactly due north, but needs to correct for that wind, right? So this is the, this is what we're trying to figure out, okay? All right, so if I call this vector here V, right? 
and I call this one W, and I call this one U, I think we can agree that V equals the wind plus what the pilot's doing, right? So what do we what do we know about all this? Well, we know that we can express W as its magnitude times the cosine of its angle. Well, the magnitude is 55 times the cosine of, and again, be careful, we're not using 30 degrees, right? We are using the true angle here. So this angle, which is 60 degrees. So we're gonna put 60 here, and then 55 times the sine of 60 degrees. And then the U is the magnitude, so 765. All right, but again, we don't know the angle, right? Times the cosine of theta. We don't, we don't know what it is, right? That's what they're asking. In what direction should the pilot point? So it would be 765 sine of theta. So this should kind of look familiar to our last problem. So we can combine these. So our x component is going to be 55 cosine 60 plus 765 cosine theta, and then 55 sine 60 plus 765 sine theta. So in our last problem, we had the insight that our resultant vector should have zero as the y component. Well, we come to the exact opposite conclusion here. Here, we want all the movement to be headed north and no side-to-side -side movement. So that means that we know that this x component has got to be zero. So this looks a lot similar to our last problem. So we've got 55 cosine of 60 degrees plus 765 cosine of theta equals zero. So then 765 cosine of theta is negative 55 cosine of 60. So the cosine of theta equals negative 55 cosine 60 divided by 765. So theta equals the cosine inverse of all that. So what it spits out to me here is 92 degrees. Okay, but of course, once again, understand that that 92 degrees, if I extend out an x-axis here, 92 degrees is this angle here. It's the true angle. But what I really want to do is be able to tell the pilot, um, you know, a, an actual heading. So what would probably be a good idea here is to draw a vertical line. Okay, and understand that we really want to tell the pilot what this angle right here is. Okay, and so of course if it's 92 degrees from here to here, then this is just 2 degrees. So what we would say as an answer here would be 2 degrees, and what are we doing? We're going west of due north.